Here's a question for you. Could we reach Alpha Centauri with existing technology? The question of can we send something to Alpha Centauri has been asked by both science fiction writers and scientists for decades. The short answer is actually a hard yes. We could send something to Alpha Centauri right now if we really wanted to. The caveat being, how long do you want it to take to get there? Much like the question, can you row a boat across the Pacific Ocean, the answer is technically yes, but it will take you a while to do so, and it won't be pleasant or practical. Voyager 1, our fastest probe in interstellar space currently, would take around 70,000 years to reach the Alpha Centauri system if we're headed in that direction. So possible? Yes. Practical? No. If you want to go interstellar, we will need something traveling a lot faster, bringing the transit time down from millennia to under a century. There is a concept for an engine known as a fission fragment rocket. The concept is basically a nuclear reactor that uses the nuclear fuel as reaction mass directly, producing a stream of particles at very high speed propelling the vehicle. The speed produced would allow for a theoretical transit time of about 50 years to Alpha Centauri. This concept is also completely within existing technology. If you want to go a bit faster and with more style, you might want to try an Orion nuclear pulse propulsion drive detonating a series of nuclear bombs behind a pusher plate to accelerate the spacecraft to high speeds. An Orion drive could be used for fast travel about the solar system, but it could also be used for interstellar flight. A large Orion ship using thermonuclear bombs could reach a top speed of about 10% the speed of light, reaching Alpha Centauri in 44 years. If we aim it for Proxima Centauri, the red dwarf in the Alpha Centauri system that lays closer to us than the main binary pair, that could cut a couple years off the trip time as well. Such a ship would be fine as a probe, if you wanted to send humans, however, it would need to be a generational ship or utilizing some kind of suspended animation technology we currently don't have. A similar concept, known as Medusa, works along the same lines as Orion, but instead of using a pusher plate behind the ship, it uses a huge sail out in front of the ship. Bombs are detonated out in front, and the sail pulls the spacecraft along on a very long tether. Medusa would be more efficient than Orion, but its speed would only be a bit higher, so travel time would still be within the decades range. Other concepts also exist, such as fusion pulse propulsion. Proposed by the British Interplanetary Society to be used in a massive probe known as Project Daedalus, it would use deuterium helium-3 pellets as fuel, compressing them with lasers in a massive parabolic engine bell, generating thrust from the burst of energy as each pellet undergoes fusion. Known as an inertial confinement fusion engine, this would allow the ship to reach around 12% the speed of light, faster than Orion, but still requiring decades to reach Alpha Centauri. If we want to send something to Alpha Centauri in a reasonable time frame, we need to, at a minimum, reach 20% the speed of light, allowing for a transit time of around 20 years. Breakthrough Starshot is a project aiming to do just that. Using the concept of accelerating light sails with lasers, the mission calls for a swarm of tiny lightweight probes with photon sails being accelerated by a 100 gigawatt laser array. Each spacecraft would be about the size and weight of a saltine cracker, and its photon sail only a few meters across. They would also not slow down, instead flying through the system at 20% the speed of light and gathering data as they go. I actually spoke with Professor Philip Lubin about the concept in 2016, ironically a few months before Starshot was announced. Professor Lubin had been working on the idea for quite some time, and I was actually interested in learning more about it as well as offering my own ideas, such as making the probes long and thin, reducing their surface area in the direction of travel, and not covering as much of the sail. However these probes turn out, it should prove to be interesting. If you want to go even faster and slow down at the destination, we'll need to stretch out a bit further into technology that's just out of reach but possibly not for long. The fuel of choice for any interstellar flight is antimatter, either antiprotons or antihydrogen. Many concepts for antimatter starships exist, from sails like Medusa to hybrid antimatter catalyst fusion to pure antimatter beam core engines. They all have one thing in common, fantastic performance and fantastic speed. An antimatter beam core engine uses two beams, of matter and antimatter. They are brought together using a magnetic field until they react at a precise location in the engine. The reaction is directed out a magnetic nozzle for direct thrust. Such an engine can have a speed of up to 50% to even 90% the speed of light. The limiting factor becomes the ship itself, the ship's mass and emission parameters. The faster you want to go, the more your ship's overall mass has to be fuel. At 70% the speed of light, the ship would take around 4 years ship time and 5 to 6 years Earth time to reach Alpha Centauri. Time dilation from traveling so fast would make people on the ship and people on Earth experience time at different rates. To save fuel, an antimatter ship, or even a photon sail ship, could deploy a huge magnetic sail, generating a magnetic field that interacts with the target star's heliosphere, creating drag, and slowing the ship down gradually as it enters the system. Less mass means faster transit if you're using antimatter. Slower flybys mean more science if you're using a photon sail. 
An issue with antimatter, beyond the obvious production issues, is fundamental to how the engine actually works. A lot of energy and matter-antimatter is lost via neutrons and neutrinos, both of which cannot be directed by the magnetic nozzle and would simply be lost as they go in all directions out of the engine. Similar to how a photon drive, an engine using photons emitted to generate thrust, would not be able to efficiently use antimatter as the photon source, as we do not know currently how to reflect and culminate gamma rays. A photon drive using black body radiation, as in directly emitting photons, would get around this problem. But the thrust is so low that the ship would need to be unrealistically large, and would accelerate unrealistically slow. Although a photon drive's max speed is basically 99.99% the speed of light, they are not practical in any way currently. So, could we reach Alpha Centauri within a reasonable time frame using existing technology? Yes, actually. Yes, we could. We just need to put in the time and effort to actually build the hardware. Laser-driven photon sails are actually the best bet currently for one-way rapid transit to other stars, but as the technology advances, we could use more advanced lasers and possibly antimatter-based engines, sending human missions to Alpha Centauri requiring only a decade or less of travel time. Who knows, some of the people watching this video may very well live long enough to see a news article announcing the first pictures taken by a probe as it flies through another star system.